you have to ask according to the script. Yeah. So, hey, I'll give this sister a flyer real quick. So, what we are here to do, sister, is to wake up the so called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans to teach them that we are the greatest people upon this planet, that we are chosen of God, and that we must return to serving Him and keeping the faith in His only begotten Son. So, my wife is a Spokane native. I have a little bit of black feet in me, but on my father's side, he would be labeled today as a so-called black man. But um, I actually, you know, we, we all come from different backgrounds of life, but we come from the people of God, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So yes, yeah, sister, are you familiar with, with you being one of God's people? Yes, I always thought you were the Benjamin. Well, actually, in the Bible, you would actually come from the tribe of Gad, sister. Ben Benjamin is our little brother. So Gad, you would be technically his older brother. His older brother, if you understand, like the, the, the context of Genesis 49 on um, Reuben being our oldest brother and Benjamin being the youngest. But we do come from the 12 tribes of Israel, sister. So that's good that you know that. That's good that you know that. Hallelujah. Okay, all praises to the most side. Bless you too, sister. Bless you as well. Well, check out check out the information, sister. Subscribe to the channel; it's free. Learn a little bit more about. Okay. All praises to the Most High. Hey, you see, God's waking up His people. Hey, the Bible tells us in Genesis forty nine, and uh, I believe verse sixteen or nineteen, He says, "Gad, Gad shall overcome in the last." So when we see the Gadites starting to wake up, okay, that's a that's a telltale sign that we are very close to the end. That's right. How you doing today, brother? Sister, how y'all doing? Y'all got a quick couple minutes of y'all's time for the Word of God? Oh, we got to be done. Oh, man, no time for the Word of God, brother. Two minutes, two minutes. Sisters, y'all got time for the Word of God? Let me give you a flyer. Take a flyer at least. Take a flyer at least, brother. The flyer. All we out here to do is to teach the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans that they're the best people on this planet. That we God's chosen people, that we must keep the commandments and, and, and return to the faith. There's a reason why we're suffering so much in totality. Are you guys so-called Native Americans and Hispanics? Okay. Have y'all ever heard that y'all God's chosen people? See how I did that? Y'all was on the way and I stopped y'all real quick? I'll praise this to the most high. Well, if y'all didn't know, that's okay because we didn't know either. Right, brothers? That's right. But then one day the Lord said, now it's time for y'all to wake up. So as you guys are leaving, know this. The so-called Hispanic and Native Americans, you guys are royalty. Okay, we're not just scum or thugs or crips and bloods or Saranios and North Daniels. We're, we're better than teepee creepers and redskins. Y'all understand? These are labels they place on us, but we go back to the mightiest people in the Bible from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God says he set his love upon us and that he's sending his son to redeem us and set us back in our kingdom once again when he returns. So in these last days, our message to our people is to find out who you guys are according to God return to him keep his commandments and the faith and god will heal you let me get second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 real quick for them leave you guys with like one or two scriptures as you guys are going right. appreciate y'all taking two seconds to stop at least go ahead this is the book of Chron second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 Bring it out. if my people which are called by my name that's you guys even if y'all didn't know that today now you guys are learning you guys are god's people and you guys are the ones called by his name go ahead shall humble themselves and pray right and seek my face uh -huh. and turn from their wicked ways meaning turn from sin you know god gave us laws to uphold to to have a good life he says that we have to keep those laws go ahead then will i hear from heaven he says once we do that once we acknowledge the ways of righteousness and apply that for instance god said don't steal so we shouldn't do that he says to love our neighbor so we should do that right these are good things right so God says, once we start to adhere to his word, then he's going to hear from heaven, right? Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, right? And will heal their land. That's how our healing is truly going to come. Like this land uh, called U.S. of A, United States of America, it shouldn't be labeled that. It shouldn't be called that because this is our brothers and sisters land. Am I lying? Right, right. This is y'all's land. But why did, why, why did, why now today? The Native Americans and Hispanics got the worst of the land, being pushed on reservations or, or being told that they're illegal aliens. God said that this would happen to our people for breaking his laws. So in, if we listen to him, he says, I will heal your land. I will bring back prosperity and good success. So I'm going to leave you guys with this last one. Give me Joshua 1 and 8. 
Joshua 1 and 8. Thank you for, for stopping for this. All praise. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This is the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Huh? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. It all goes back to obeying God. He says, don't let the law depart. We have to hold on to that thing. Go ahead. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night we got to concentrate on the word of god focus on his word and I, just for y'all just so y'all know it's not a white man's book like we've been taught jesus was not a white man the people of the bible look just like us brothers and sisters and we can prove it they lied to us throughout history to make us think that this is christ that is not christ okay the people of the bible is they look just like us brothers and sisters go ahead that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. The entire word of God. We have to apply it. Go ahead. For then. For then. For then, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous. That's how we're going to become a prosperous people again. Be that royal people that God has commissioned us to be. Go ahead. And then thou shalt have good success. So our success and prosperity has always been through the word of God. Y'all understand? Okay, all praises to the most high. So understand that you guys are God's people. You guys are royal. You guys are royal. You're just not Hispanics and Native Americans. These are names they put on us. You guys are chosen of God. So we have to keep the commandments and follow who they call Jesus Christ, whose name is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach in the Hebrew. Okay? All right. Peace and blessings, right. brothers and sisters. All right. Peace and blessings. Right. 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 Hallelujah. All right. All right. All right, you too. Thanks. All right, you know, see that? At least they gave us a couple minutes of their time. Yeah. And that's all we ask from our people. You know what I mean? Just two minutes of y'all's time. You know, one one seed like that. Look, don't sleep on it. You know, seeds blow in the wind, right? And they go wherever wherever they're, God is leading them to land. But don't sleep on just one seed falling in the background somewhere. That one seed can become a mighty just forest of trees or plants. Okay? That's right. But if you're just looking at it, it might seem insignificant to some, but God has a plan with those seeds. So when we plant those seeds in our brothers and sisters' spirit, who's to say that it's not going to flourish one day? The Bible says one will plant, one will water, and Yahweh, God will bring the increase. So I just want to get back to uh, what the brother was talking about. Um, he was talking about, like, we're out here to not ruin anybody's fun or you know to rain on anyone's parade essentially we're not out here to do that but we're out here to bring correction as needed to draw our people back to the father so there's nothing wrong with having a good time and, and fellowshipping and you know smiling with people but at the end of the day we have to do it in such a way that is not going to cause us to break god's laws give me exodus 20. Let's get Exodus 20 and verse 8 because today is what they have declared to be Hoop Fest, the biggest three on three tournament in America. Now, once again, as the brother said, we're not saying that there's anything wrong with going out and shooting a basketball in a hoop, okay? But there is something wrong when we're doing it contrary to the Word of God. And a lot of people are oblivious to what they're doing, a lot of people are just unknowing, they don't have knowledge. And so that's why. The ministers or the messengers of God have to come out here and give the people knowledge. That's right. Let's get uh, Exodus 20 and verse 8. Give me the book of Luke chapter 7, verse 31. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Bring it out. Remember the Sabbath day. What did the Lord say? Remember, Remember the, the Sabbath, Sabbath day. day. So that is our message to our people is to teach the laws of God. So one of the laws of God, God commands us to remember the Sabbath day. Well, for those that have an ear to hear, this is the Sabbath day. So God says we must remember this day. Go ahead. To keep it holy. To do what now? To, to keep, keep it holy. This isn't holy what we see in. People out here playing basketball, buying and selling. They're drunk. They're high. They're they're looking to be uh, promiscuous and uh, you know sleep around. This isn't what this day is supposed to be about. God says to keep this day holy. Go ahead. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Right. right. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right. In it thou shalt not do any work. Uh-huh. Thou nor thy son. Right. Nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant. Right. Nor thy cattle, 
nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. See that? So God commands us to keep this day holy. Before before we get uh, Luke, give me Isaiah 58 and 13. Isaiah 58 verse 13. So as the brother said, we're not out here to ruin no one's happiness, but we're out here to give correction so that our people can truly be happy and have real joy and peace. Ah. Because little do they know, breaking God's laws is going to equate miser misery, death, ah. sorrows. So it may seem like smiles today, but it's going to be cries tomorrow if our people don't understand and receive the knowledge of the truth. Go ahead, King. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 13. Check it out. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, right. and call the Sabbath a delight, uh -huh. the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. You see that? So we don't want to just be doing whatever we want on the Sabbath day. There's certain things that we're supposed to be doing on the Sabbath day. One being resting in the Lord. God commanded this day to be a day of rest. He commanded this to everyone that we have to take this day and, and, and treat it as holiness. Because that's what he has said from the beginning. That he hallowed the seventh day and made it holy. So we don't want to be buying and selling and playing basketball and sleeping around and being drunk and high and planning on uh, reveling and riding. That's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to keep this day holy. Give me how y'all brothers doing today? How you doing, sister? Y'all got a couple minutes y'all's time for the word of God? Two minutes y'all's time for the word of God, brother. All right, all right. Just in case y'all don't make it back, know this. Y'all God's chosen people. That's right. We royalty upon this earth, brother. We ah. must keep the laws of God and the faith in Christ in these last days, all right? All right, brother. All right. All praises to the Most High. Let's get Luke chapter 7, verse 30, 31 on down. And give me Isaiah 5 and 11. Luke chapter 7, verse 31. And it reads, And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? Look what Yahweh Shai say. He says, Where has he likened the men of this generation? Go ahead. And to what are they like? What are they like? Go ahead. They are like unto children. Unto what? Unto, unto children. children. Uh -huh. Sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mo we have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. And this is what our people uh, want to live up to. They just want to have a good time. They just want to party and live it up. You see, God said to keep this day holy, but instead people just want to do what society has taught them to do. But see, if you understand that there's consequences for breaking God's laws, you should repent, turn from that behavior. Once wow. again, as the brother said, we're not saying there's anything wrong with playing basketball. We're not saying there's anything wrong with gathering and taking walks in the park and having a good time. Just wow. do it on the appropriate days that God says it's okay. He says six right. days, we can do these things. Right. But the seventh day, we should be resting in the Lord or doing the work of the Lord, That's adhering to his word. That is what we're supposed to be doing. But when we look around, we see people like what? Like children in the marketplace, wanting to play and just party and have a good time. Give me Isaiah 5 and 11. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 11. Bring it out. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink. And that's the thing. 20% of the people down here most likely are intoxicated. They're coming down here drunk and high as any big turnout or any big uh, crowd of the masses, people get drunk and high on these type of occasions. They rise up early, 10, 11 in the morning to get drunk and high. Now, for those that got spiritual ears, this is also talking about the false doctrines of this world that people are being intoxicated with. Uh, Go ahead, King. That continue until night. Right. Till wine inflame them. Continue until the darkness takes them. Okay, that's a spiritual connotation that goes with it. Till the wine inflames them, until they are completely bugged out with false doctrine. But on the flip side, yes, it's actually talking about actual wine and liquor and drugs and intoxication as well. Go ahead, King. Verse 12, and the harp, and the vial, and the tabret, and pipe, and wine are in their feasts. You see that? And that's what they want to do. Like I said, just want to party and live it up. Go ahead. And they regard 
not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hand. You see that they don't consider the operation of his hand, his work. You see, we got to be cons we got to be encompassed and enticed by his word, not enticed by this world. Solomon said, if sinners entice these, consent thou not. You see, that's the problem is our people are consenting to the wrong things. They're consenting to whatever society has taught them. But we have to lean to God and not our own understanding. Okay? Turn back to the living God and you shall be healed. Give me the book of John chapter 4, starting at verse 7. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 5 from the top. Our people are intoxicated with, with that one. How you doing, brother and sister? Y'all got a couple minutes y'all's time for the word of God? Two minutes y'all's time for the word of God? Y'all believe in God? Yeah, of course. Okay, y'all from Africa? Yeah. What part of Africa? East Africa? Yeah. Okay, well do some research. Look in your father's lineage. We're out here to wake up the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans and teach them that they're the people of God. Hey, the Bible says in Isaiah 11, 11 that our people are in East Africa too. We in all nations upon the earth. As the brother said, we can't just go off the appearance and Israel has to stop doing that. Now, I want to be clear. Does appearance matter? Yes. It's just not the end all be all. Okay, because we see appearances in the Bible. The appearance of Christ is described. The appearance of the southern kingdom is described. The appearance of the northern kingdom is described. The appearance of Esau is described in the Bible. So appearances do matter. It's just we don't make our final decision or final judgment based off of that solely. But it is a telltale clue or sign on who God's people are. Otherwise, the descriptions of God's people would not be in the Bible. But on the contrary, it is. So it does matter. It's just not where we base our final judgment off. How you doing, brother? You got to come miss your time for the word of God, brother? Take a flyer there while you want to go. And as you leave, brother, know this. The so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, we are God's people, chosen people. We must turn back to the commandments of God and keep the faith in Christ in these last days, all right? All right, brother. All right, all praise the most high. Give me that John 4, verse 7 on down, and Matthew uh, 5, uh, verse 1 on down. It's the book of John, chapter 4, starting at verse 7. God. Salakia. And it reads, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahweh saith unto her, Give me to drink. So here it is. This is a Samaritan woman. For those that don't know, this is talking about a northern kingdom sister. This was an Israelite from the northern kingdom. And Yahweh is at the well and he tells her, Give me to drink. Go ahead. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. All right. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me? So the Samaritan woman understood that during this time, the northern kingdom of Israel had no dealings with the southern kingdom of Israel and vice versa. There was that separation stemming all the way back to the times of Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Kind of how it is today, that, that same hatred that is lying within our people. Our people don't even recognize each other as brothers and sisters, unfortunately. It's part of the curses, Deuteronomy 28, verse 54, that evil eye towards our own people. God says that this has followed us throughout our generation. So in, in the time of Christ, it was the same thing. Our people were segregated from one another. Go ahead. Which am a woman of Samaria. Of the northern kingdom, because Samaria was, was one of the capital cities of the northern kingdom. Go ahead. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. The Jews, meaning the well, what they would be called today, the southern kingdom of Israel, black, uh, African Americans, Haitians, Jamaicans, West Indies, Tobago, so on and so forth. Those would be considered uh, the Jews today. Go ahead. Yahweh answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of Yahweh, and who it is that, that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. How y'all doing today? You got a couple minutes, y'all's time for the word of God, sisters? Okay, so, um, so he says to the Samaritan woman, this, this northern kingdom sister, he says, If you knew who it was that was talking to you, the gift of God that I have to give to you, he's referencing himself. He's referencing himself. He is that living waters that he's talking about. Go ahead. Um, it's like it. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, 
and the well is deep. Right. From whence then hast thou that living water? He said, so she responds to him, where is, where is, where's your bucket? How are you going to get the water out? Where is this living water that you, that you're telling me about? She's not understanding what he's, ta what he's talking about at this point. Go ahead. Uh, Art thou greater than our father Jacob? And so she lets it be known who her descendancy is. She goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we have to understand, we have to read the Bible in its totality. The Samaritans were the Israelites, the northern kingdom of Israel. Go ahead. Which gave us the well uh -huh. and drank thereof himself right. and his children and his cattle. Right. Yahawashai answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Whoever shall drink of this water, meaning the natural water, the actual water that was in that well, he was telling her, he said, you're going to drink that water, but rest assured, you're going to be thirsty again. You're going to need uh, to be uh, hydrated all over again. Go ahead. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him. But Yahawashai says, but the water that I have to give to you, the water that I have to give to you, go ahead. Shall never thirst. Shall never thirst. Go ahead. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into, e like it, into everlasting life. And into everlasting life. Those living waters. Yahawashai, the Bible. The Bible says that the word is that water. Uh, That's the waters that he was offering this some this Israelite sister, this Northern Kingdom sister. But she didn't understand it because Christ spoke in parables. Huh. He spoke in similitudes, dark sayings and mysteries. That's why not everyone could understand, but those that have an ear to hear will get it. So he's telling the sister, he says, what I have to offer you is much greater than this well, this water in this well. I'm gonna huh. give you waters that are gonna give you eternal life. How you doing, sister? A couple minutes y'all time for a word of God? Two minutes y'all time for a word of God? All right, I'll praise the most high. You don't mind me asking, what is uh, your eth ethnic background, your ethnicity on your father's side? Black, okay. What color is your shirt, sister? What color are you? Are you? There you go. You, you, you're a beautiful brown, right? Now, they call us black, and they have been for a long time. That, that name has been placed upon our people for millenniums. Black, right? It's even in the Bible, okay? But we're much greater than a color in a crayon box. So if we're not black, because you're actually brown, right? What would you be next? What is your ethnic background? Okay, that's good. Let's start there. Give me Hosea 4 and 6 and give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. The sister says she doesn't know. So that's why we come out here to teach our people who they are. Because that's we didn't know at one point. We thought we were African American. We thought we were Mexican, Native American. But everyone goes back to a biblical descendancy. And so we have to determine through uh, diligent study, where do we go back to? Because our ancestors were brought over in this country, how? Through the transatlantic slave trade, correct? By who? By the Europeans, the same people that forced their language upon us, their customs, their philosophies, their religions, and their names, correct? Such as African-American, like, Somebody showed a sister real quick it's on the back of that sign right there, I think, where Africa and America comes from. So those names, those terms have, oh no, that's not it. Where is it? Is it on the back of that one? Uh, spare with me. It's on one of the, oh, it's on this one. It's on this one. Water king. So African and American, those names go back to two Italians, Europeans, what they would call today so-called white men, right? Africa, going back to the name of a man by the name of uh, Scipio Africanus, who conquered the northern parts of Africa. The name America comes from an Italian map, map maker by the name of Amerigo Vespucci. So if we're not black, and if we don't go back to African and American, two names of two white men, then who are we, right? We have to find out who we are. So give me Hosea 4 and 6 and then Jeremiah 7 and 4. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. You know, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now God says his people. Notice how he's, he's talking to somebody. He's not saying everyone. He's saying my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Go ahead. 
because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, right. that thou shalt be no priest to me, uh -huh. seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Seeing that we forgot the laws of God, God says now we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So that knowledge that is that is referencing is God's law, statutes, and commandments. Now, Jeremiah 17 and 4. This and is the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. No. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. Now, this happened to us as a people. We lost our heritage. We lost our culture. We lost our language. We lost our identity, sister, to this very day. Now we think we're proud to be an American. Now we serve different philosophies and customs were brought up under their schooling system, forced to pledge allegiance to a flag that did nothing but rape, rob, and murder our ancestors. Am I lying? But today, we're, we just go with it, right? Okay, go ahead. good question that's a good question uh, you know and that's we have to teach one another okay that's how God has commanded so she says she believes that the mother determines the, the, the lineage or the pedigree of the child correct so we base our understanding off what does say of the Lord so let's see what God says about it okay is that, is that fair okay let's get uh number chapter 1 and verse 17 on down and then give me Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11 I believe it is Book of Numbers, chapter 1, starting at verse 17. And Moses and Aaron took these men, which are expressed by their names. Do you know who Moses, the biblical character Moses in the Bible is? Okay, he was a, he was a, a prophet and a priest of God, okay? He taught God's people. Go ahead. And they assemble all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Right. And they declare their pedigree. Their pedigree, you know what a pedigree is? your bloodline or your descendancy your lineage of it's kind of like a, a dog is determined by its pedigree okay so god says you are determined by the pedigree by what after their families by the house of their father their mother by the house of their father so the father carries the seed i give you an example everybody that is walking upon this earth actually every species upon this earth has been predetermined by the seed that the male is carrying. Even in plant life, it's the same same notion in animals. Before we were in our mother, we first begin with our father. It's called semen. Semen in the Bible is called seed or copulation. So God says that the, the father determines the lineage or the pedigree of the person. So you are determined not by your mother's side. Your mother would act as an incubator in the same way the earth is, is to the seed of a plant. That seed already exists before it's planted into the earth. In the same way, a man has to plant his seed in a woman, and then the fertilization takes place. But the copulation comes from the man, not the woman. Does that, you understand that, sister? So that's what God says. I'll give you another one. Give you Genesis 1, verse 11 on down. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, uh -huh. the herb yielding seed, Herb, you can see, right? Sorry, buddy. Go over that again. And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. After what? After, after his kind. After her kind. After, after his, his kind. kind. So in the same way in the human race, the male determines the lineage or the pedigree of the person. Same with the plants and the trees and animals and everything. The male carries the seed, plants the seed in the woman, but the, the, the lineage or the pedigree is determined by the father. Does that make sense? Okay, so any confusion there? Okay, I'll praise it to the most. And that's why we come out here to teach, to give our people understanding and clarity on questions they may have. All praises, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you That's see good. that? That's awesome. Hallelujah. Good, good. Okay. 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 okay, so let me show you something. Watch this because 
that's not on accident. That happened by design. Give me First Corinthians chapter three from the top. Watch this, sister. What's your name, by the way? Maxine, I'm Brother Uriel. Nice to meet you, guys. What's your name? Kobe. Uh, I love that name, man. It's my favorite basketball player of all time. <laughs> so, uh, First Corinthians. Uh, First Corinthians chapter three from the top. So our message is to bring you back to the Father. First, give you the understanding on who you are and then draw you back to the Father if it is his will. First, First Corinthians chapter three from the top. Read up. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, right. even as unto babe so in we Christ. Have, we have to speak to people on the levels they're at. So he, he calls it as the carnal as unto babe. So in other words, can't give a kidney gardener uh, trigonometry or calculus. It, it, it'd be like they couldn't understand it, right? So we have to give babies milk. You don't give them meat that you want. So you have to meet people where they're at and, and build from there. The building blocks. You got to lay a foundation and then build from there. So this is what Paul is telling the church of Corinth. He says, "I got to give you a foundation to build upon, and then we'll build from that point on." Oh, she's and, up there. Look at her. I have fed you with milk. And not with later. meat. Not with strong understanding. I got to give you the basic understanding is what Paul is saying right here. Go ahead. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it. So not you're not able to bear strong meat yet. And that goes for all of us. We have to learn in, in uh, increments. You know what I mean? If you try to drink too fast, you're going to drown yourself. You chew, chew too much. Uh, there's that old saying, don't bite. How do you say it? Don't bite too much more than you can chew. Right. Don't bite more than you can chew, right? So you have to, you got to do what you can, what you're able to handle, right? Uh, Learn what you're able to, right? Go ahead. Neither yet now are ye able, right? For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, and ye are not carnal and walk as men. So Paul was assessing the church of Corinth, and he's saying that there's some issues that needed to be worked out. There were some problems within the church. Go ahead. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. So they were following men. So one would say, I'm walking with Paul, and another person would say, I'm walking with Apollos. Well, watch what he says. Go ahead. Are ye not carnal? So Paul said, that's carnal. That's not the point. We're not supposed to be men pleasers. We're supposed to follow who? God, right? Go ahead. Who then is Paul? Who is Paul? When it's all said and he's just a messenger of God, right? Go ahead. And who is Apollos? Just another messenger of God, right? But ministers by whom ye believe, uh -huh. even as the Lord gave to every man. So God sends out his people to deliver his word. So what is he doing? We're just messengers like Paul and Apollos. Both our mission and our objective is to draw you to who? Not us, to the Lord, right? Go ahead. I have planted. I have planted. So sons of thunder planted. They planted some uh, basic information when you went down to, to Atlanta, you learned some basic information to start. Go ahead. Apollos water. And now we are watering that seed. So you, you, you received a little, now you're receiving a little bit more. But watch this. And God gave the increase. The most high God is the one who's going to let that seed flourish. The nutrients, which is the word of God. That's why Christ said, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So you received a little down there in Atlanta. Now God led your steps here to receive a little bit more. And if it is his will, he's gonna draw you closer to, to him. And then on the day of Yahweh Shai, Lord willing, you will be sealed and be ready for the kingdom of heaven. Any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. Clarity, say that one more time. Right. Now you say the laws made against the tribes? Against the tribes? Oh, the curses. There you go. Because I was like. No, 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 no. Uh, that's a good question. He says, he says, was the laws on, or excuse me, you first said the laws. The curses. Are the curses only against the southern kingdom, which is the uh, Judah, the kingdom of Judah. No, let's get the curse. Let's get Deuteronomy 28. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, and then jump back to Deuteronomy 28, 15. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, and verse 1. Bring it out. And it shall come Slock to... It, Slock it. Give me Psalms uh, 105. Um, starting at verse 10, I believe it is. Go ahead. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. 
and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken. No, no, no. Deuteronomy 1 and 1, and let's jump back to Deuteronomy 20. Okay. Right. Deuteronomy 20. Good question, though, man. That is a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, good question. So Israel is comprised of two kingdoms, the southern and the northern, but they're all represent one nation of people, Israel. But you have to understand the history on how they became divided in the days of uh, Rehoboam and uh, Jeroboam because of idolatry. God split the kingdom. But that, that's that's another. I mean, we could get there if y'all got to be patient and got some time. But that's a little heavier right now, the topic. But I want to deal with your question. Go ahead. Give me um, Deuteronomy chapter one and verse one. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. Break it out. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. To who? Unto all, all Israel. Israel. No, just the southern kingdom. Unto all, all Israel. Israel. All of Israel. Who was Israel? Israel was a man whose name was originally Jacob, and God renamed his name to Israel. Let me show you. Give me uh, Genesis 32, verse 28. Hold it where you're at. Genesis 32 and 28. This is the book of Genesis chapter 32 and verse 28. Break it out. And he said... Thy name shall be no more Jacob, uh -huh. but Israel. But what? But Israel. Israel. So Jacob's name got changed by God to Israel. Israel is not just a name. It's actually a meaning. And he's going to explain what that name means. Go ahead. For as a prince hast thou power with God. With God. So Israel, Yasha Allah in the Hebrew means prince of the power. That's what that means. So... This is the, where the name Israel comes from. It's not the name of just a land. It's the name of a man and his descendants. Give me Genesis 49 from the top. Genesis 49. This is the book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last day. So he's talking to his sons, and he's going to list his 12 sons. Go ahead. This is speaking into the last days, the days that we are presently living in right now. This is the last days. Verse 2. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob. Ye sons of Jacob. Go ahead. And hearken unto Israel, your father. Right. Reuben. Reuben's the first one. Just read, just read the names, actually. You don't have to read, like, just, just go down and read the names. Reuben, Simeon, and Levi. Sort of, yeah. Judah, Zebulon, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, and Joseph. Benjamin. That's the youngest. So that's the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, the reason you don't see Dan on here is because Dan got reduced from, watch this. I'm going to deal with that in just a second. I still want to I still want to address that, then I'm going to show you why Dan's not on that chart. So give me, go back to Deuteronomy 1 and 1 and in Deuteronomy 28, 15. So these are the 12 tribes of Israel. Joseph got split into two people, though, Manasseh and Ephraim. We'll show you that in just a second. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. These be, let's lock it. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. To all Israel, not some of Israel, not just the southern kingdom or the northern kingdom, but all the above, all 12 tribes. Go ahead. On this side, Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel and Laban. So God sent Moses to speak to the nation of Israel, all Israel. Now give me Deuteronomy 28 from the top and then jump down to 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So this is one of the blessings that God said would come upon his people for obeying his law, statutes, and commandments, that we would be the top nation, we would be the, the, the stratosphere of all nations. Now verse 15. Deuteronomy 28 and 15, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. But if we choose not to listen unto his word, right? To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, 
that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So all these curses shall overcome thee and overtake thee. There was no segregation when it came to certain curses would go to you or this person or that tribe. It was take that damn cool. all of Israel. All of Israel. Now, the only why Dan is not on there because we see Ephraim and Manasseh. Give me Revelation chapter 7 from the top. Then give me the book of chap uh, Amos chapter 8 from the top. And then we'll get Judges chapter 18. This is the book of Revelation chapter 7 from the top. God. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Are you, you're in Genesis, right? Oh, I thought you were yeah. in Revelation. Oh, Revelation. No, you're good. You're good. Revelation 7. Come on, come on. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, right. till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Till we seal the servants. So God has given a commandment to the angelic force to seal the servants of God. Watch this. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. Which were sealed. And there were sealed an hundred and forty four thousand. A hundred and forty four thousand. Because if you divide a hundred and forty four thousand by twelve, that's twelve thousand of each tribe. Twelve times twelve is hundred and forty four, right? So when you do it in thousands, that's 144,000. This is what he's telling us. Go ahead. Of all the tribes of the children of Israel. All the tribes of the children of Israel, right? Of the tribe of Judah. Right. Of the tribe of Asher. Right. Of the tribe of Simeon. Right. Of the tribe of Zebulon. Right. After this, I beheld, and lo, a growth of Salakiel, of Zebulon, of the tribe of Joseph, of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so that's all the 12 tribes that are mentioned. You didn't hear Dan that time, right? So why Dan isn't on there? Let me show you now. Give me the book of Amos chapter 8 at the very, at like 814, I think it is. Let's see. Yeah, eight. Start at verse, start at verse. Um, start at verse 11. Start at verse 11 and then give me 1 Kings chapter 12, starting at verse 19. Amos chapter 8 and verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, right? not a famine of bread, nor, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And that's what's happening. They're trying to silence God's people from bringing out the truth because they society wants to uphold false doctrine and philosophies and rudiments and false teachings out there. But God said in the last days, his people are going to wake up and, you know, his people are going to get sealed, but they are going to try to shut us down, even kill some of us for bringing out this truth like they did with all the prophets of old. Throw us in jail, kill us, call us a hate group, uh, label us as all kind of bad things when all we're doing is teaching God's word for what it says. Go ahead. And they shall wander from sea to sea. Right, from place to place, motion, uh, from land to land, right? And from the north even to the east. Mm -hmm. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord. People are going to seek it, but there's going to come a time where it's not going to be as uh, readily accessible because they're, they're going to put laws on stopping us from coming out and preaching the word. It's already happening, believe it or not. Like in Florida, for instance, they're trying to suppress God's word. Uh, they're doing, what is it called, critical race theory and stuff like that? Or you can't even talk about our history as what happened to us and stuff. Go ahead. And shall not find it. Right. And all, and it's like it. And that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Faint for thirst. If you got spiritual ears to hear, it's talking about thirsty for the word of God, the living water, which is the word of God. Go ahead. They that swear by the sin of Samaria. Of Samaria. Go ahead. And say, thy God, O Dan. O what? O Dan. Uh -huh. Liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth. So what, what happened to Dan? Why isn't Dan, as one of the numbers that are going to be sealed in the 144,000, 
because of their excessive idolatry. Let's let's prove it a little further. First Kings chapter 12, starting at verse 19. Give me Judges 18 from the top. This is the book of First Kings chapter 12, verse 19. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. Now remember, I told you that the Israel got split into two kingdoms, the southern and the northern, two Two kingdoms. So the southern kingdom today, who would they be? Your so-called African Americans, your West, your West Indies, your Haitians, and Jamaicans, the, the the islanders. That's who we are. The southern kingdom. Your northern kingdom of Israel would be your so-called Hispanic and Native Americans today. Even though we look a little different, we go back to the same forefathers: Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we can prove this based off prophecy, history, and archaeology. All of it will coincide to teach who we are. Go ahead, King. And it came to pass. When all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation right. and made him king over all Israel. So now, northern kingdom of Israel made Jeroboam their first king. They elected Jeroboam as their first king. Because during this time on the southern kingdom, you had Rehoboam as their king. Who was Rehoboam? Solomon's son. Who was Solomon? King David's son. So David was king, then Solomon, then Rehoboam. During the time of Rehoboam, the kingdom got divided to two kingdoms. The southern with Rehoboam ruling, and then now the northern kingdom with Jeroboam being their king. Brothers and sisters, but two different kingdoms going at it now. Go ahead. And when Jeroboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, right? a hundred and four score thousand chosen men. So the, the tribe of Judah held hands essentially with the tribe of Benjamin. That's our Jamaican brothers and sisters today, right? So they got down with each other. They said, we gonna rock with one another, right? This is brothers segregating from each other, but God already told us in the previous chapter, in 1 Kings 11, that because of Solomon's idolatry, that he was gonna split the kingdom from, from Solomon ruling. but but through his son Rehoboam, though. Go ahead. Which were warriors right? to fight against the house of Israel. To fight against their own brothers and sisters. Go ahead. To bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. To bring the kingdom back to Rehoboam, to the southern kingdom of Israel. Go ahead. But when the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam. The son of Solomon, right, king of Judah, right, and unto all the house of Judah, right, and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, right, saying, Thus saith the Lord, ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren. Don't fight against your brothers. Don't go up against your northern kingdom brothers or your Hispanic and Native American brothers, as we would call them today in society, right? God says, don't do this. Don't go to war with them. Go ahead. The children of Israel return. Notice how he called the northern kingdom the children of Israel. So when you read the Bible, you will see the southern kingdom being referenced as the kingdom of Judah. Or the northern kingdom being referenced as Israel or Ephraim. But in totality, they're all still Israelites. And they go back to their father, who Jacob, whose name was later changed to Israel. You see where I'm going with this, brother? Sister? Right. Okay. Go ahead. I know it's, it's kind of tough to us, but if you if you could follow with me. Okay. Good. Good. All praises to the Most High. So it can get a little confusion. Rehoboam, Jeroboam. It sounds the same. Israel being one kingdom, but being referenced as just the northern kingdom as well. That's why he says, "He that have ears to hear, let him hear." The Bible is is it can get a little um, challenging for for people that are unlearned or doesn't care about God. God intended for it to be that way. That's why he says, you shall find me when you shall seek me with your whole heart. When you have a sincere and genuine passion to know God, he's going to reveal himself more and more, and you will learn of him. It is important. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it won't, right? 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 
Right, right, right. Exactly. Right, right. You did? To where? Right, right. Right, right. So, right, so good good question. I, I definitely like that question. Is can we prove the race of Jesus? So before I answer that, let us let me finish this context to see why Dan was excluded from being sealed as the 144,000, why he's not on the on the chart, okay? So we're going to finish this context, and then I'm going to show you emphatically what Christ looked like in the Bible. Just like this. Go ahead. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. Right. They hearken, therefore, to the word of the Lord, and return to depart according to the word of the Lord. Huh? Then Jeroboam built Sheshem in Mount Ephraim, and dwelt therein, and went out from thence, and beat and built Benuel. Right. And Jeroboam said in his heart, now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. Now, this is important because now Jeroboam, he's the first elected king of the northern tribe of Israel. So now he's starting to establish his kingdom by building cities. But then he says unto himself, he's reasoning amongst himself. He says, oh, oh yeah. snap, if I don't do something, I'm going to lose the northern kingdom tribes back to the southern kingdom. So once he became king... He started feeling himself you know that that crown started making him feel like he was somebody real important right so he started saying what do i gotta do to keep my tribes from going back to the southern kingdom to rehoboam go ahead king how you doing brother oh praise the most high we're teaching the sister right now about the 12 tribes of israel and then we're gonna she asked a question about the race of christ so we're gonna illustrate that in just a second I'll praise this whole time. Go ahead. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. Now, why did why did Jeroboam said if this people go sacrifice at the house of the Lord in Jerusalem? Because when you read Deuteronomy 16 and 16, God gave a law that says three times a year, all the males have to go to the place where God chose to do the sacrificial laws. And that was in Jerusalem where the temple was built. Okay, go ahead. Then shall the heart of his people turn again unto their Lord. So he feared that he was going to lose his kingdom back to the southern kingdom as it was once uh, uh, solidified as one kingdom. So he was happy with the kingdoms being divided. This was Jeroboam's evil way of thinking. Go ahead. Even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. Which was Solomon's son, which was David's grandson. Go ahead. And they shall kill me. Right. And go again to Rehoboam king of judah now this is his own imagination though understand this this wasn't a message from god this was jeroboam's own jealousy and envy of him wanting to stay in rulership of the northern kingdom this isn't god telling him this this is his own reasoning and he's leaning to his own understanding go ahead whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold uh oh now we we've seen this in history before during the time of moses where the Israelites rose up and made that calf of gold, and they served the, the, the golden calf as a god. And God was not pleased with that, and he destroyed a lot of people that day. So Jeroboam forgot about that history, apparently, or just didn't care. So he says, I'm going to make my own gods for my people to serve. Go ahead. And said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. He said, I don't want you going back to Rehoboam, to the southern kingdom, to go sacrifice as God commanded. I don't want you to do it that way. Go ahead. Behold thy gods, O Israel. He says, Behold, these are your new gods, these golden calves, right? Which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. He claimed that these golden calves that he manufactured were the ones that delivered God's people from Pharaoh in the, in the time of uh, Moses and uh, uh, the Egyptians. That's not who delivered God's people, uh, these two idols, married. right? But this is what he's telling you. The northern kingdom go ahead and he set the one in bethel he set one of them in bethel watch this and the other put he in dan and what in dan and dan so what happened to dan 
Dan got reduced because of excessive idolatry. So when you go back to Amos chapter 8, verse 14, God said, like, look, hey, I'm not dealing with Dan because Dan went off into mass idolatry. So when you go back to Revelation chapter 7, why Dan's not there, but you see Joseph's sons there, is because they replaced Dan to still be the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Does that make sense? Okay, so now dealing with your question, the, uh, the, the race of Christ, is that in the Bible? So let's go back to Revelation 1, as you quoted, but I'm going to show you a little bit more in depth that it is in the Bible. Revelation 1 and 1, and then give me verse 11. This is, the, Jeremiah 7 and 14. this is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So can we all agree that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ? What is the root word of revelation? Reveal. What does it mean to reveal? To show. Good, sister. So this is the showing of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So he showed John the Revelator. John the Revelator, the disciple John, is reporting what he's seeing. Watch this, verse 11. Saying, I am... Alpha and Omega, right? the first and the last. Watch this. And what so thou seest, what, what? What what thou thou see see right, like, right in a car. book. So he tells John the Revelator what you see, writing in a book. So this isn't a guess. This isn't a hypothesis. This isn't a dream. This is actual John the Revelator seeing actual Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Let's see what he saw. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. In the midst of the menorah, this is why that, that idol cross, that's an idol. God never said to wear the cross. He said to bear the cross, meaning follow him. That cross is an idol. The menorah is a symbol that we have always had from Shalom, sister. Peace and blessings, Lord. Peace and blessings, Peace and blessings Lord. Lord. Peace and blessings, Lord. Peace and so he says, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one at, like unto the Son of Man, because Christ is called the Son of Man. Go ahead clothed with a garment down to the foot now in order to have a garment on down to the foot would imply that i have a body uh, to have a garment on correct that's right so john is looking at christ he's bowing before him and he sees christ with a garment on down to the foot right and girt about the paps with a golden girdle he has a golden belt around his around his robe right his head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, the first description we see of Christ is it says his hair was white and wooly. Now, we just have to do the process of elimination there. What people have wooly hair upon this earth? For sure, without a shadow of a doubt. So that's strike number one against this guy, right? That's the, that's the image that is propagated all over this world. Can we agree? That does not line up with the first description that we got of Christ. Can we all agree with that? Okay, so the first image, or the first description, white and woolly, go ahead. As white as snow. White as snow, right? And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now why does it say as a flame of fire? Because when you read Genesis 49, verse 8 to 12, it says that his eyes would be red with wine. What was Jesus' first miracle? turned the water into wine. It was customary for the Jews to drink wine. So here it is. John is looking at Christ. He said he had a redness to his eyes. That doesn't line up with the blue eyes that we usually see on Christ, right? So the blonde hair and the blue eye, that's strike two, correct? Keep reading. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burned in a furnace. So in his feet, like unto fine brass. Now, what color is brass? I'm speaking a little loud because we're recording. It's a, it's a derivative of brown, correct? So it says, as if they burn in a furnace. Now, John is looking at Christ, and it says his feet look like they were brass burned in a furnace. Now, if you put anything in a furnace, what color is it going to turn? Then it gets darker, right? I've never put something in a furnace, and it got lighter. For a fact, it gets darker, correct? So woolly hair, red tinnitus to his eyes, and dark skin. That's not this guy. We know who this guy was. That's a man by the name of Cesare Borgier, Pope Alexander the Sixth Son. This image got painted during the Renaissance by Leonardo da Vinci, the same one that painted the Last Supper and the Mona Lisa. The Catholic Church propagated that image to deceive the world. God's people were in slavery when that image got placed everywhere in this kingdom. And then they gave us that and said, bow down to that or else. 
So now, furthermore, Hebrews 7 and 14, Jeremiah 14 and 2. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. Now, was Jesus a Jew? Yes. He was from the reader. Hebrews chapter 7 and 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Out of what? Out of, of Judah. Judah. You guys said that earlier, y'all. You guys are aware that he sprang out of the tribe of Judah. That's correct. It is evident, or it is a fact, that he sprang out of the tribe of Judah. Let's see. Let's give me Jeremiah 14 and 2, and then give me Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah mourning. The real Jews are in mourning, meaning they're suffering as a people, right? And the gates thereof languish. Meaning their protection, because gates act as a protection or a leadership or a council. So God says this is a similitude that's happening. It's literal and it's a similitude. Because the Bible says that the scriptures are double to that which is. So it's a literal reference and it's a spiritual reference as well. So it says that the gates thereof language, meaning we don't have real leadership because they have been languished throughout time. Go ahead. They are black. They are what? They, they are, are black. black. Unto the ground. Now, why does God say that the Jews are black unto the ground? Let me show you Genesis 2 and 7. Now, remember, the Jews are who? The southern kingdom. So, the Hispanic and Native Americans are the northern kingdom of Israel. Still, brothers and sisters, though. Go ahead. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. Bring it out. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Of the dust of the ground. What color is the dirt? So when he says Judah is black into the ground, get it? God has given us a reference on what the Jews actually look like. Furthermore, give me Daniel 6, 7 and 9, then give me Acts 13 and 1. It's the book of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. Uh -huh. I, I beheld until the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Who was the Ancient of Days? God the Father. He's before time. Go ahead whose garment was white as snow and fully righteous fully righteous full of wisdom knowledge and understanding go ahead and the hair of his head the hair of his head god the father like the pure wool like the what like, like the, the pure, pure wool, wool. Well, that makes sense because god said he made man in his image now if god made man from the dust of the ground and black people have woolly hair that goes together doesn't it now we just we're doing the process of elimination here. That's why the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So it says God the Father had hair like the pure wool, just like Christ's hair, just like his daddy. You make it plain, right? Uh, Daniel ten and six. Daniel ten and six. Shalom, on, brother. Daniel, Daniel ten and six. I just want to get the key key uh, references. Uh, it's the book of Daniel chapter ten and verse six. God. His body also was like the barrel. Like the barrel. So in this context, he's wearing green clothes. This barrel is B-E-R-R-Y-L, I believe. It's, it's, it's a, like a dark green attire. Go ahead. And his face has the appearance of lightning. Because it is. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 8.1, wisdom maketh one face to shine. Okay, that's what that's talking about.